Hello, loves, and welcome back to this grim little setting. Welcome back to this last video in the current Let's Play of Bloodborne. I say the current Let's Play because I'm sure I'll do it again at some point. Uh, I mean, I didn't even anticipate doing this one, but I have done it, haven't I? So here we go. The final boss. It's just down this tunnel. This tunnel's weird, look. There are the snail women down here who seem to be lost in some fugue of worship. It's very interesting. They are the handmaidens of a particular goddess. A goddess who has been beached up upon the shoreline of the Sea of Dreams, thanks to the efforts of Bergenworth and the hunters that came with them. This is what I've been talking about this whole time. This is where you get to see it. This is the grand sacrilege of Bergenworth, the healing church, the hunters. This is the sin that the, the hunter's nightmare is trying to conceal from both the hunters themselves and the rest of the world. Look, there's the tainted sun shining down on the, on the shoreline of the Sea of Dreams. And upon it, the corpse of a murdered goddess. The greatest of the great ones, in fact. Alongside Erden. This is Kos. Mother Kos, the goddess of the Cosm. This is what they did to her. Beached her up. Oh! And murdered her whilst she was still pregnant. And this, this is the tainted orphan. This is the abortive great one. The child that is the sins of the hunters made manifest. The orphan of Kos. Born of a dead mother. It's every step one of torment. Oh, wow. It's incredible. Have you noticed how its abortive wings look like the vestments of the healing church? No mistake that, my loves. Right, I'm going to summon in a helper for this because this fight is tough. As you'd expect, this thing is so weird. It's got a move set that's like both a hunter and a beast. Most enemies are one or the other in this game. This is both. And there's, there's some oblique connection between this creature and Gehrman. I don't know what it is, it's never made explicit, but there's something about Gehrman and this creature. My guess is, the way, what I hypothesize is, it's Gehrman's child. We know that the Great Ones can't give birth on their own. They're impotent on their own. They need a mortal creature, a creature that dreams in order to give birth. They need a surrogate. And I think Gehrman was the father of this creature. And I also think, given the state of Kos, I think that it was a case of... I hesitate to say it, to be honest, but I think it was a case of rape. I think that's the greatest sin here. I think that, along with Bergenworth and the Healing Church, they were trying to create their own Great One. And this is the result. This abortive, tortured thing. But look what they've done. They've murdered the Goddess of the Cosmos. The greatest of the Great Ones. Through their efforts to transcend, They've murdered the metaphysics of this universe and rendered it into something repulsive. Look at that, the abortive wings on its back. It's Oh, it's calling the storm. This is amazing. Look at this. It can call storms down. It's a, I mean, it, it may be abortive, but it's still a great one. It's still a god, you know? And still very powerful for all that. It's quite incredible. I love this fight. I love it to bits. I love the fact that it's it's both its parents in one. It is both Koz and Gehrman in one. You know, it's an amazing thing. And it's also the sins of Bergenworth. It's the ultimate evil of the Hunters made manifest. And it's dead. Oh, thank you to my compatriot there. He did fantastically there. I've got to say, his, he massacred that. That was none of that was me. He absolutely massacred that thing. 
amazing stuff. That would have taken me forever to do on my own, I can tell you. Anywho, there's the diseased sun, and if you look, it's not dead. Look, its, it's tainted soul is still anchored to its mother. Can you see? That's the tainted soul of the Orphan of Kos. And we're going to free it. By destroying its physical form, we've freed it. Now all we need to do is free its soul from the nightmare. Let it go back to the Sea of Dreams and be whatever it can be. And there we are. That's it. It drifts back out into the ocean. And the nightmare is done. We've done it. Sweet child, of course, returned to the ocean. A bottomless curse, a bottomless sea, accepting of all that there is and can be. Accepting of all that there is and can be, that's the point. It's the sea of potential. It's the sea of dreams and nightmares. Everything derives from the great ocean and all realities are connected to it. It's beautiful, really. It reminds me a little bit of Quiddity from Clive Barker's um, Books of the Art. It's got that quality about it. But that's the end of The Hunter's Nightmare. And what an ending it is. I actually like that ending better than the ending to the main game. I think that's beautiful. Speaking of which, we, it's time we went and met German, isn't it? Back to The Hunter's Dream. Nothing else left to do other than to face the Keeper of the Dream. The man who anchors it. And we all know who that is, don't we? And as the doll has already told us, he's awaiting us now at the foot of the great tree. If you look in the distance, look, can you see the, the pillars, the trees rising? What does that remind you of? It looks like the Ash Lake, doesn't it, from Dark Souls 1? And it's the same thing. It's denoting to you. It's, 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 it's implying through imagery what's going on here. That there are multiple different dreams. There are as many dreams as there are hunters, you know? It's brilliant. Good it really hunter. is. You've done well. Oh, thank you, Gammon. The night is near its end. Yeah. For you too, mate. I will show you mercy. Oh, will you? You will die, forget the dream, <laughs> and awake under the morning sun. Oh, no, I won't. <laughs> you will be free. No, 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 no. From this terrible hunter's dream. I think not. Nah. <laughs> oh dear. Dear, oh dear. I know. What was it? The hunt? The blood? Or the horrible dream? Oh yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, dearie me. <laughs> That's so anime, isn't it? Weiss comes down to the hunter's helper to clean up after these sorts of messes. Uh oh. Yeah, he is literally death in this scenario. That's the point. Gammon joins the hunt. Oh, he doesn't he off. He's tough, is Gammon. You've got to use a few tricks with him, otherwise he can massacre you very quickly. When he uh, reaches his third phase, when he can't be staggered, then we're going to be using a few tricks against him, my loves. He's actually, when he's got his scythe out, when it's in its big mode, he's actually rather difficult to stagger. When it's in its little sickle and gun mode, then it's much easier. You know, we can use that. We can actually get that weapon. It's really good. The scythe, it's a brilliant weapon, actually, as you'd expect. He can also break your combos and chuck you up in the air on his scythe. So he's tough. He's, a, he's a, a nasty piece of work. I think, on balance, I think Maria is harder than he is. Maria usually takes me a couple of tries. I can beat Gammon the first time round. That said, this is, um, this is New Game Plus, so he is a bit more tricky. And we're wasting bullets like nobody's business here. You see, he can also do that, leap back. That is the most annoying thing he does. 
that leap back. But look at all these flowers and these gravestones. All of them denote the hunters that have passed through the dream already. That he sent on their way to a new waking. Either to the beginning of a new dream or to another life. Another, another state of being. It's cool, isn't it? Unfortunately, he's here forever until someone releases him. And that's us. We're going to release him. Because we're going to... We're not going to take his place. You can do that. Ah, this is... He's easier to stagger in this mode. You can take his place. That is one of the endings of the game, actually. But we're not going to do that. We've got better things to do than be stuck in this place. Yeah, he's actually much easier to stagger in this mode. Unfortunately, you've got to watch it. He can stagger us, too. You know, he can get some nasty visceral hits in here. Gotcha. Ah, it's, it's actually difficult to trigger, though. Gotcha. Ah, love his hat. In fact, his whole costume is magnificent, isn't it? I love how ragged it is. Here we go. Third form. Okay. Now, he is unstaggerable. He is so tough now. And he has some very nasty arcane attacks on him. So, I'm, what I'm going to do... I'm going to switch up and I'm going to hit him with the black sky eye from afar. This is one of his nastier arcane attacks. Don't get caught in that. If you get caught in that, he can kill you in one go. There's a couple of attacks he's got, actually, that can kill you in one hit. So, be careful. We'll get hits in where we can, but unt until then we're going to use the um, the black eye, the black sky eye because it's brilliant. He's so difficult because you can't stagger him at all. He is unstaggerable in this mode. He doesn't even flinch. Look, when you hit him, doesn't even flinch or pause. It makes him so difficult if you haven't got any ranged attacks. An arcane build is good here. He isn't even trying yet. Okay, here we go. That, if that hits you at a particular point, it can kill you in one go. You need to be so careful with that. And that, if he gets you with those hits, you're done. But, I've got my black sky eye here, and we're fine. It's got a limited range on it, but it's doing pretty alright for us at the moment. Oh. <laughs> Oh, here we go again. Oh, 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 that was close. That was bleeding close. You've got to keep your health above a particular margin here. Because if you don't and he hits you with a certain attack, you're dead. He will just massacre you. What makes him hard isn't his moveset. It's the abilities that he's got. It's the special abilities. I'd say Maria is much harder than him. Much more aggressive, certainly. I mean, if you keep him at a certain distance, he won't attack you. He'll just, keep, he'll just do that. He'll stalk towards you. And you can sort of catch him. If you keep him at a certain distance, you can catch him in that moveset. But he can do that. He can get viscerals on you. If he hits you with his gun, he will get that visceral off. He's almost done. He's almost done. Oh, that would have done him. That one hit would have done him. Oh, we got us. Oh, God, I thought he killed us then. Bloody hell. One more hit with the black sky. I should do it if we can get him. If we can get him. Or a good swipe with the holy moonlight blade. That would do it too. I lo look at the blossoms flying. It's such a beautiful fight, this one. Got him. They were for you. But he's not dead. He's not dead. He's woken up. For the first time in centuries, probably, Gehrman has woken up. The dream is done for him. That's the first time it's ever happened. It's the first time he's ever been beaten. And this is the great one that he made the bargain with to create the hunter's dream. This is the moon presence. It could be Erden. This could be Erden. It's not named as such, but it could be. 
Look at the putative wings on its back. It attempts to embrace us as a surrogate, as a replacement for Gaiman. However, we've taken the umbilical cords into ourselves. We are becoming a great one and we are now antithetical to it. It can't sire children with us and so it hates us. It has to destroy us. We are antithetical to it. If you haven't got the thirds of the umbilical cord at that point, then it embraces you and it makes you the next surrogate of the dream. This thing isn't that tough actually. Despite being the final boss, it's got a weird move set. It's very difficult to predict, but it's not that tough. Even on New Game Plus, it's not. It's quite easy to dodge. It's got some very nasty attacks. There's one that takes away all but the last slither of your health. It also has a special ability that stops you from healing at one point. That. Look at what that does. Takes away almost all your health. But after it pauses, look. It wears it down. But this is kind of what's behind everything. The dream, the nightmare, everything. Alongside Gehrman, it created the Hunter's dream. To cycle the Hunters through. Why? It's hard to say. But I think what you can infer is that it hates Great Ones. It hates other Great Ones for some reason that is undisclosed. We don't know why. It just does. And so it cycles the hunters so that they will kill and hunt the Great Ones. This attack. When it does this and these orbs of light rise, if you're anywhere near them and in the, the blood rain that they call down, then it takes away your ability to heal for about, ooh, a good three minutes. It's dead. That's it. The moon presence is done. The greatest of the great ones. Done. And that's the end of the game, my loves. Amazing, eh? And this is the ending that we fought for. The Hunter's Dream is still here. And it's still here because we're still here. Yes, that's ours. <laughs> Good hunter. Oh, we're great. We're the best of hunters. We've done what no hunter before us has ever done. We've ascended. We've ascended the dream. We've ascended the nightmare. We are now a creature of the great ocean. And we are a creature of nightmares and dreams. We can go anywhere and be anything. And that's that ending. It's great, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. I love that ending. I love it to bits. And the fact that that's the good ending. That's the ending that you have to do all the secret stuff to get. I love that. I love it to bits. It's so weird. And I love there's no there's no preamble about it. There's no exposition. It doesn't really explain what's happening. You have to infer what's happening. What I infer from it is that that is us. That is what we've become. A, a, an infant great one. We have become a god in our own right. And we will go on to sire dreams and cycles and nightmares of our own. Uh, we haven't left the nightmare. We haven't woken to a new day. We've become a thing of dreams ourselves. It's very cool. I love it. I love it to bits. And I wonder if there is ever going to be a new Bloodborne or a spin-off or whatever. What ending will it follow, if any? I mean, it doesn't matter. They're all... They're not, like, mutually exclusive. It doesn't need to follow one or any, to be perfectly honest. But what could happen if it follows that ending, the hunter that you play in this game could easily be a boss or the antagonist of the next game. It could be a great one that you seek out, that you hunt down, right? It's kind of fun, isn't it? I love the metaphysics of this game. You know what? I love pretty much everything about this game, I've got to say. It is its top two for me, this game, of, of all time. Uh, it's up there with Pathologic 2. I think it's one of the best games ever made. The storytelling, the mythology, the aesthetics, the mechanics of the game. I just love every element of it. I think it is sublime. As a storytelling vehicle, there's not much like it. The fact that it inspires such discussion, 
that there are entire YouTube channels out there dedicated to its exegesis is incredible. I think is absolutely incredible, and it can be read that way. You you could write you could write theses on this game. You could dissect it like a text. You could actually write a very interesting sort of um, university essay or dissertation on this game, as you could with da the Dark Souls games, um, and it would be as legitimate as it would for any written text. There's that that theme tune. That's Murgo's lullaby that you hear in various forms all the way through the game. If you ever go and play it again or watch a Let's Play, keep an ear out for that theme because it's everywhere. And it thematically links the entire game together. It provides a kind of binding agent for the game. It's beautiful. Sinister, weird, and absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I love this game so much. It's... um. Uh, well, I, of course I do. I've played it three bloody times on my channel now. <laughs> three times, my loves. That's uh, that's excessive. That is excessive to play any game, to be perfectly honest. But it is one of those games where, because it's so good, you kind of get withdrawal from it. You kind of feel the need at certain points. Like, oh, I could just go through Bloodborne again, you know? I could just go through Bloodborne again. It is that game. And whether anything will replace it, I don't know. I don't know. I'm keenly aware that I need to do do the new Demon Souls, because I haven't played that yet, but I need to get a pissing PS5 first, don't I? Which is so difficult in the UK at the moment. Um, yeah, I, I love this game. I love all these games, actually. I'm not very good at them, as is evident. I'm not that great at them. But I do love them. I do love them to bits. You know what I would really love to do? I would love to do Dark Souls 2 again. Because I don't know whether I was terribly fair to it on my first Let's Play. I mean, there are elements of it that just infuriate me, but I love what it does with the world, and I love what it does with the metaphysics of Dark Souls. I'd love to do all the Dark Souls again, actually. I might do that. I might give that a go. If people would be interested. I'd love to do them again. From 1 right up to 3. Because I never finished 3. I got right to the end and I never finished 3. I got stuck at... Um, oh, uh, Gale. I got stuck at Gale in the uh, the Ring City DLC. I could not kill him. Um, but who knows? Maybe I'll be, I'll be a little bit better at it this time. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. But yeah, I these games, honestly, I mean, keep churning them out from Soft. Uh, we've, of course, we've recently seen the the trailer for Elden Ring, and that looks like it looks for all the world like it's going to be a, a next gen Dark Souls game. So I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm absolutely fine with that. Anything, anything that's like these games, I'm there. I'm in. You know, uh, I would love to see another Dark Souls. I really would, but I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's legitimate now, to be perfectly honest, beyond remakes, because Dark Souls 3 really does tie up most of the mythology. It ties it up, but it also makes it potentially infinite, so you could do it. There's no reason why you couldn't have other worlds, and... I mean, in Dark Souls, you have that whole mythology about the painted worlds, where there are infinite realities contained within paintings and images, so why not? You know, I mean, there is even an implication in Dark Souls that this is one of those paintings, that Yharnam is one of those paintings, one of those painted worlds. So, my loves, with a heavy, heavy heart and veins full of blood, I uh, bid you adieu, bid Yharnam adieu for a little while, maybe for a good long while now. Until next time, bye-bye.